everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and um, we're back together again. We're going to start working on decorating the inside of the album. The last time we were together, we did the cover, the spines, and the back. And I think I have most of my papers lined up. Um, I am going to do a little bit of stop-start, uh, just because um, it's just too much paper to have flying around. It gets a little bit confusing. So um, this is actually going to be a latch that closes uh, on page one, but for the time being, we're gonna leave it open. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the inside liner, I've chosen the burlap. I think it looks nice. It's going to allow for some embellishments on here. So I wanted to keep it kind of simple. page one. I haven't decorated a finished book or folio in so long it feels a little awkward. Normally, you know, we do our pages outside of the book and then we add them, so it just feels a little weird. It's okay though. It's different. That's why I used to always do it. To me, it's easier. It's, you don't get a flat surface, but when you're working with lots of papers um, and pre-cutting like I do because I want to have everything ready for when I'm videotaping, so there's a huge opportunity to get your pages out of order, upside down, or repurpose paper um, easily. If you've got, you know, eight pages cut out, it's very easy to mix them up. And then when you put it together, you're like, oh, wait a minute, that was supposed to be on a different page. So it is easier to do it this way, in my mind, uh, if you're going to pre-cut your papers. But if you're just cutting as you go, it doesn't really matter. I think I would work on the flat surface. Okay. This is our pocket liner, which just matches this, and it's actually quite long, so I'm gonna trim it off a little, so I don't have to work so hard to get it in. All right, I think I've got, it's an inch and a quarter, and it doesn't even have to be that long, but it's easy enough to hold. I'm gonna slide it slightly into the pocket. I'm leaving my leading edge dry so it's easy for me to slip this edge inside the pocket without leaving a trail of glue oh i forgot to ink that edge so instead of leaving a trail on the inside i'm making a mess on the edge it's always something always something okay there we go so that's done. So that's page one. There's our pocket. We'll put something interesting in there later. And I'll put this in here for now, just so I don't forget. Okay. And then here is uh, the B side of the first page. And this was a 12 by 12 sheet that I cut in sections that's going to cover the spread. And I think that turned out pretty nice. So that's the spine. And this is the page piece. And then this is going to fit very snugly, just the way I trimmed it. It's going to go actually underneath these two score lines. And um, it works. And um, you don't have to worry about the pages not operating. They do. All you really need to do is ink the edge, because both of these edges are going to be slightly tucked in. And I'll show you how I'm going to achieve that. It's a little fussy, but you can do it. Or just cut it thinner. 
This is one of those things where if you had laid this down before you attached your pages, much easier. But uh, that's, that's not the way I had constructed it. But it's something you might want to consider if you haven't built yours yet. Okay, and then I've got a spatula here. I'm just going to make sure it's tucked in. There we go. Nice. Okay, and then here's the other piece that finishes the spread. Oh, I don't know if I, I can't remember if I told you that I added a magnet. Um, I want the book to stay closed even if it's not tied, so I added an additional magnet right here. And then I'm going to add its opposing magnet. Sorry. I gotta turn it, I can't see my edges. Can't see my edges. Oh, you know what? I need, to, I need to shave a little off. It's a little too wide. So I'm gonna shave that down. So what I was saying is I've got a magnet here and there's a magnet here. I'm gonna add another magnet right here to hold, actually this magnet here is gonna hold this cover closed. Then there's a magnet on the inside that's holding this closed. Okay, sorry about the interruptions. That was my husband, he usually calls me at lunch. And uh, he was running a little late, so I had stalled thinking, well, maybe he's just not gonna call today. But of course he did after I started recording. But anyway, here we are. I hadn't trimmed this quite right, so I took another sliver off. It was a little too wide. So we're gonna reapply this. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna start getting more of the stuff on the inside decorated. So um, this is also from the 12 by 12 and it's a continuous pattern and that's what I'm using on. This is what's considered page two or the B um, pocket page. <clears throat> Double checking. I thought I had trimmed everything just right, but it looks like I have not. So my apologies. Get this shifted on me. Tuned and installed, there we go. this side and it needs to be trimmed down a little. Okay, we'll ink it. Okay, so uh, when we come back, we will do these um, two diagonal pockets, but I'm gonna leave those for now, and we're gonna focus on installing um, the folio pieces. Now, there's a couple things you can do. If you want to have this 
cut out in your designer paper, what you're gonna wanna do is slip your designer paper in there and then trace around this, and then you're gonna need to fussy cut it out. If you don't wanna be bothered with that, you can just cover it like this and have it be a rectangular shape. I'm gonna go ahead and trace it and fussy cut it out just so you guys can see how I'm doing that. If I can find my pencil, there it is. So I'm gonna, and apparently I put a bunch of stuff in the pocket already. I was wondering why this didn't wanna go down. So uh, slip your paper inside, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And then you're gonna to wanna to trace trace that and then you're going to trim that off okay it's hard to see but it is there I'm going to be cautious and undercut a little instead of overcut you can always take more off later so I'm going to do this rough cut and um, then come back and lay it in and see how it fits And it looks a lot like the We Are Memory envelope maker punch, but I'm not sure. I didn't test it. So, yep. So it looks like I need to cut down just a little more. So I'm going to wind up being on the outside edge of my um, pencil line. Let me put a contrast paper in there. This is good enough. I still need to come down a little bit more, I think. Yep. Trial and error, trial and error. Until you get it right. My goodness, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> I think this is the fourth time now that I'm trimming. Some of you are better at this, I think. This is the kind of stuff where I lose my patience. I want straight edges. They're easier and faster. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough. You may or may not agree. And then we're gonna need to do the same thing on the top because it's got this cutout. Now I'm gonna tell you a workaround if you don't want a fussy cut. Um, the queen of working around hand cut pieces because like I said, I just find that very difficult. Uh, especially when you're cutting on a pattern paper because your lines are, you've got a pattern line and a cut line, it's blinding. Could see I could, I could have done a little bit better there. In fact, before it completely dries, maybe I'll try to trim it.
You can see my hands jittering because I had coffee. I don't know what happens when you get old, but I can't tolerate caffeine anymore. Even just a single cup is enough to send me. Okay, let me get this little piece turned off. That's a little better. It's not perfect, but it's a little better. Okay, so now we have to have um, an inside and an outside. I guess these are the same. Um, so if you don't want to deal with cutting that, the other thing you can do is, let me find my six by six cut aparts. You can use one of these cut aparts and it fits right over that as you can see. And so you could just glue it down over this and you don't have to worry about that and then just do a, a, another one on the reverse side. So let me cut one of these out real quick. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna cut it the way it, it's designed, but I just wanna show you what I mean. I should have done something different, but I'll just cut these two out. I'm probably gonna use them somewhere else. <clears throat> So you would apply it like so. And then you're really covering that piece up. This this could be just a straight um, rectangular piece. This would be covered up. When you open it, you would just have another one on the flip side. And again, you'd only have to cut a rectangular strip. So it's a workaround if you don't want to fussy cut. I am gonna fussy cut and I'm not gonna do that while you guys watch because you make me nervous. No, because it's very time consuming and you guys don't wanna sit and watch me do that. So I'm gonna trim these out to fit and then find a piece to fit into the pocket to cover this, this little bit of liner that's exposed. So when I come back, we'll put these two pieces down and then we'll get back to work on the center. Be back soon. Okay guys, I'm back and I've uh, organized a few more things. I am gonna have to do a little bit of trimming, but I do have some of it done, um, so you have to bear with me. So these are the um, the corners that I'm going to use and this came off the 12 by 12. So I just cut a diagonal um, side and I just think it looks really neat to have the birds facing each other. Pretty sure that's 12 by 12, let me see. I've cut through everything, so now it's getting difficult to pick out where I got some of the images. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I think, I'm pretty sure it's 12 by 12. Yeah, it's too big to be on a 6 by 6. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do with these two corners. And then um, I had some Graphic 45 tags left over from a previous project. So I'm going to use two to tuck into the pockets. Let's go ahead and do our tags real quick. So I cut this from a, the six by six and there's two of each image in the six by six. So I did one for each tag. And of course I use the graphic 45 tag die. Ooh, I just noticed something, I forgot. I actually trimmed these down uh, this is the regular size tag, and I actually made it a little bit smaller, which means I need to trim down the tag piece. I forgot. And I honestly don't remember why I trimmed them down, but I did at any rate. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim these down around the corners real quick. It doesn't have to be very much, just a little bit. Actually, it looks like I had trimmed down the original papers that I chose. Yeah, 
And then the, the top is what's not trimmed. So we'll just go ahead and get this on. Ink that corner again. Okay. So. So currently this image is what's planned for the flip side. And there's an upside for these tags and you can tell just by looking at the grommet. Okay, and so this will be the A side. over trimmed oh that was a mistake I don't know how I did that I marked it and I just moved it over too much so I'm gonna leave that as is I'm gonna go ahead and cover the back side the ones that I have trimmed out right I don't know how I made such a big mistake but I did I might have to come up with an alternate pattern to go on the front side but let's go ahead and glue down the backs and then um, we will quickly measure out um, the two inside liners if they need to be trimmed a little bit and then inked. Okay. So this diagonal doesn't necessarily need a, a lot of glue. I'm gonna put some down here, but I'm not worried about coming all the way down to the end. And it just makes it easier to put into the pocket. So now I can tell you by looking at this, this came from a six by six. This is the 12 by 12 version of it. And that's the diagonal, yeah. And then if you don't want to fight with this corner, you can trim part of this diagonal off so that only maybe a half inch is going behind this diagonal pocket. It's up to you. It's not like you can really repurpose that little diagonal piece, so I just went ahead, unless you were trying to do a continuous pattern between the inside liner and the pocket itself, which I opted not to do. And I kept the inside liner of the pocket simple because I wanted to do something interesting with um, the inserts and if you have too many patterns on top of each other it just it, it's hard to look at your eyes don't know where to land so in my mind I'm thinking you know this is a beautiful background and then you can put something interesting on your tag and then you have this frame around it so your eyes drawn to the tag And then, like I said, I'm probably going to pick something else for the back because I over-trimmed the piece 
that I had uh, set aside for it. So that's done. So now um, for the, um, the waterfall piece, I chose one image that's gonna cascade down. And I think it looks pretty. Now, because I want this to look like a continuous image, I've got I've trimmed off these half inch pieces that are just gonna trail down, but that means the top part of this is gonna be blank. I have to make sure I've got my bits in order. So I know the blue needs to go to the right. the right order. So the next um, waterfall piece is going to get this. Okay, and then this is the final piece that's gonna go right down here. And I'm just gonna make sure there's a little bit of a border on the bottom. That's it. Okay, I hadn't inked that, it's all set now. So now I want this down so that I can make sure that it's centered um, and not off to one side or the other. So I'm just gonna leave that down. Like I need to scoot it over. Even more. All right, I just had to go say goodbye to my son who was taken off for the day. So didn't that turn out nice? I just love that. Um, somebody else had just posted a project on um, our Facebook page, and she had done a, a waterfall feature. Hers was one that you pulled, and it it flipped on its own but she had done the same thing and I've done this before too and I always forget I really like the way that looks I think it's a fun image now of course the rest of these are not fully covered I may not cover this um, but I am going to do something on the back here because um, there may not be enough paper I haven't decided yet so we're not there yet but we as you can see are making very good progress so I'm going to take a break go get some lunch when we come back we're going to finish this pocket and I'm going to trim out a piece to go across the top here. We'll cover this front and back. And then I'll locate some paper to cover the back side of these tags. And then uh, depending on where I my paper situation lands, we uh, may or may not cover the full back, uh, back of these. But we'll see. And I'd already cut these apart. So that is where we are for now. I definitely, like I said, want to put a header here. I think it looks too naked. And I'm contemplating putting a strip here. Uh, on these gussets. There's, it's about a half inch gusset. I haven't decided. So that's where we're at for now. Back soon. 
Hey everyone, it's Daphne and we are going to uh, finish up uh, some of the details on the Delta Folio album. So, when we last left, we still had um, the pocket to finish. So we had the main piece down, but we didn't have the flap covered. So let's go ahead and get that done. little harder to nudge it into place because the uh, the hinge wants to give way so we'll just adjust a little there we go and that's in now we're gonna flip it over do the reverse side and I just use the same pattern I mean you could go either way if you like this better <sighs> actually let's do it for a change of scenery Now I just used this flap and laid it down over my designer paper, traced it, and then trimmed down to fit. And as we talked about earlier, if, you, if you're not a big fussy cutter, you don't want to trim, I get it. Um, especially if you're making a lot of albums, it's very time consuming. Um, one way to mask it, and no one will know except you, is to take a small, anything but it has to be the the width of the tab that you're trying to cover and of course i can't find anything right at my fingertips let's just say it's this and just lay it right over that with a black border and then everything here is a rectangle that fits right into your trimmer and you don't have to deal with it and then when, on the flip side you do the same thing just add that extra little trim that doesn't have these slants and then you can trim everything in your um, paper trimmer, no hand cutting. Okay, so the last thing here is to find a piece of paper that's going to fit right here. And I'm going to need a minute. Um, do I? Mm, no, I don't like that. I like the print, but I don't like it with this, so I need a minute. Hey, that was faster than I thought. This is what I'm going to use. I'm going to lay this down, and it's going to be the inside. It's not going to be the whole thing. I'm just going to trim out enough oh it's not quite wide enough but i do think i have another piece of this somewhere hold on here it is so i do have another piece of it so i'm going to trim off about an inch six and a half to five and a half and then and that should be enough to cover the space right here oh needs to be a oh no that's right so the what I'm keep getting mixed up on is there's this slight gusset here that I'm not planning to cover because it's so narrow that I think by the time you cut a strip and you put it there and all the folding, it's going to buckle. So I'm not going to do it. Some of you might be brave enough. I'm not. I'm going to go with lining the pocket and calling it finished. Let's get some glue on it. I think this is a super cool print, by the way. It's very versatile. Oh, did I not trim? Oh, I think it's going to work. I didn't quite. It probably should have been... A little bit narrower. But it works. There it is. Okay. And then remember we have, because the way I did it, there's a magnet behind this and behind here. Okay. So let's go ahead and get this uh, closure covered. And I'm just repeating this paper pattern right here. 
the burlap, which I like. I even like using real burlap. Um, I just think it's very interesting, the texture. It's not very, it doesn't smell good, but it's very interesting to look at. Okay. So now we're gonna close page one, and then we're gonna cover the flip side. And I think it's more critical to have the burlap on this side, so if you feel like you're running short of the burlap, use something else on the inside of the closure. But I think the um, pulling this burlap back in, and by the way, when you open it again, you're pulling this burlap in, I think it creates some balance. can see that my edge came out from under the hinge here and it was trying to pull back so I might spend some effort trying to glue that back down on both sides yeah so for now I'm just gonna push it under with this but I might want to spend a little time so if you're having difficulty with that then I would just suggest doing it a little bit more narrow but then you do have the issue with these two functioning um, pages that are gonna wanna pick it up. It's just part of it. Okay, so while we were away, the other thing I did was I found the paper that I wanted to use on the flip side, and this is what I chose. So that's what we did together. This is what I did offline. And then I dug through my charms, and look what I found. I found a frog, and it's, it's, um, it's probably, I'm gonna call it, a crane. <laughs> I don't think it's really a crane, but that's what I'm going to call it. And uh, I think it's flamingo, but it still looks close enough to what's on the paper below it that it works. And I love those two things. I found this little detail piece that we're going to put across the top. And it's not a continuation of this sheet, but it's very similar but I did make it a little bit wider than the actual waterfall. Okay, now we still have this closure to go through, so I'm just pulling this pattern back in. Both of these would have worked, but I like the contrast that this brings. There we go. Let's see, where are we? I think we're just about done with the exception of inserts. So this closes this way, this way, and this way. Nope, that's not right. Yes, it is. This closes like that. This, no, this, 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 and then this. All right, and then we tie it to hold everything tidy. And just so you know, just because of the way I designed it, and those charms actually are doing me a favor in holding these pages apart. So it is a nice tight square and it's working beautifully. And I love it. Okay, I also do have a secondary magnet here and on this page that are holding the folio together. So even without the ribbon, it is holding together well. But I do say that the, um, the charms are keeping it from collapsing on itself. So that's nice. Okay, so that is the bulk of the album. I'm just gonna take a few minutes and um, design some things to go into pockets. And then you'll see that, whoops, on the walkthrough. Okay, so we did do inserts for these pockets, but there's enough room to put an even taller tag behind it. 
This is our waterfall. I'm gonna go through my scraps and if I have enough paper, I may uh, put a strip on the, along the bottom side or even cover the back side. And there's our folio pocket. And there it is, close. Okay, so next time I come back, we I'll have some inserts in the pockets and it'll be a walkthrough.